Listeners, today we're going to talk about histograms, and histograms are a way in MATLAB. They're, they look a bit like bar graphs, but MATLAB's taking some data and putting it in different bins or categories for you. So I might ask a survey question to a group of people, like how much time do you spend watching TV per day? And I got this set of answers from one of my classes and I color coded everything that was between zero and 29 as an answer in green and everything that was between 30 and 59 in blue and everything between 60 and 100, I color coded that in purple. And so I ended up, there were four different answers that were in that first category, two in the second category, and three in the third category. So if I was to graph this in a histogram, I would have the first container or bin of data has four different people's uh, data inside of it. And the second range of 30 to 59, well, that's only has two people in that range. And then the last range, it's a bigger range. It goes from 60 to 120 on this graph, uh, but it has three people in that range. Um, so that is an example of a histogram. Let's see how we would program that in MATLAB. And I'm going to, so I don't have to memorize all those numbers, I'm going to create a vector that I pulled from this PowerPoint slide that has that data in it. And then, so there is a built-in MATLAB command for histogram. And if you're curious about how to use it, you can use help histogram. And you'll get more than you ever wanted to know about histogram. And there's various ways to use the function, but the easiest way is to just pass in your data as a vector to the function histogram. So I'm gonna use that way first. So histogram, and then in parentheses, I'll do TV data, pass that into the function, and then it'll decide for me the range, the beginning and the ending range for the first bin, and the beginning and ending range for the second bin. So what it does is it tries to make um, bars that are the same width. So it makes the categories even as far as the number of values you could have between the start and the end. So this goes from zero is our starting value up until right before 50. So zero to 59 or 49 and then 50 to 100 is our next bin. And using that data, that TV data, so if we take a look at that again, if you've got these two um, bins that have an even range of X values, then you've got six people in the first category and you only have three people in the second category. So that second category contains the 60 and the 90 and then the 97. Well, what if you don't want three, two bins, you want three bins, kind of like that example I was showing you earlier. Well, then you can call histogram and pass in a three as your second argument to that function. And voila, you'll have three bins. And my first bin still has a lot more um, data inside of it. There's five different numbers that fit in that category. So it may be more important to me to have different ranges and I may not care about the length on the x-axis being identical. I may wanna specify the starting and ending value for each of these bins, each of these categories. And how I could do that is by passing in, instead of the number of bins as a second argument, it's gonna be a vector with my, let's say my starting value and the ending value for the first bin. And then the second bin will start with 30 and it'll end, let's say right before 60. And the third bin, maybe I want that to go all the way to 120, even though my data doesn't really go that high right now. Um, so if I hit enter, these, these four numbers that I'm passing in are used to find the beginning and the ending of these three bins. And you can set those however you want. Well, with the histogram, you can use the same commands we've used all semester to add titles and labels to the X and the Y axis. So here I've got an example with that TV data, only it looks a lot nicer once you add a title and you label the X and the Y axis. 
And then I've got one more example to show you. And this example, my data fits in one of three categories. My data is either a zero, a one, or NAN stands for not a number. So I could put these into categories. So I'm gonna pass in my data to this function category categorical. First I pass in the array or the vector that has the data in it. And then I pass in the three possible values and then I've got a cell array that has words that we could use to describe each of those situations. So the situation where the data is A1, we could say that means yes. And zero means no. And NAN, not a number, we could say that means undecided. So when we pass into the histogram command, this result from this categorical command, then we're gonna see that we have these labels that are easy to understand along the x-axis. All right, and that's enough about histograms.